Good morning. Hey, good morning. Guess what? What? It's not code. It's not code. I'm so happy. Isn't that psyched? That's it good. is amazing. You know what else? What's that? It's not fasting day. That is not fasting day. Those <laughs> are all good, couple of good things right it's there. It's all good things. Absolutely. Mm. How was fasting day for you yesterday? Uh oh, we're I'll talking to each other. Turn it off. There you, there go. you go. Good job. How was fasting day for you yesterday? Yeah, I started getting hungry around two. Yeah? Yeah. But, uh, you know, made it to six and then feasted. Yeah, I was hungry <laughs> yesterday as well. I was grumpy yesterday too. Yeah. When I texted you and you ignored me and I had to come down here to your office, I'm like, why is he ignoring me? I had to come marching down the stairs. <laughs> but it was fine. We made it. We did it. We fasted. So it was all good. Right. Uh, how was your workout today? Workout was good. I had a really good workout. Shoulders, triceps, abs. Okay. So I did a lot. Um, yeah, as I told you, I had a little realization from a few people in the gym, like, It was warmer crap, in the gym today, good. so Russ took his sweatshirt off, because he usually works with a sweat, works out with a sweatshirt on, but because it was warmer today, it was warmer in the gym, mm -hmm. so he ended up working out, you know, in just his t-shirt, and I think there were a few people who were like, wow, his waist has gotten little. Right. Look at that. Look how tiny that is. Look how impressed he is with That's himself. Crazy. <laughs> Just wait till it's summertime. That's right. He's gonna be working out in a tank top. That's I'm getting tank tops, damn it. <laughs> How long has it been since you worked out in a tank top? <sighs> not that long. Thirty years ago. Thirty years ago. <laughs> <laughs> you are not old enough to say thirty years is not that long ago. Really? Yes. Oh, okay. Well, then such a long time ago. <laughs> That's better. It was like ancient. <laughs> Back in the paleo day. Yeah. <laughs> um, I did cardio today. I rode about eleven miles. And I uh, did not ride super, super hard. In fact, I was brushing up on the science of low carb diets while I was riding because that's what we want to talk to you guys about today. Mm -hmm. Because low carb is so popular mm -hmm. and it is something that um, so many people are on and they feel like they're, what they're doing is healthy for them. So I wanted to talk about the actual science of it with you a little bit. And right. I, I read Russ an article on the way home that talked about it. So I want to start with. So there are a lot of low-carb diets. There's there's Paleo, there's South Beach, of course there's Atkins. Um, I don't know what the other ones are. There's like a list of there's like there's a whole slew of, of different ones. Yeah. They're basically all the same. They're low-carb diets. They're all based on the Atkins diet. And so I want to start with the Paleo because that's the most popular. And I want to start with what they get right. What they get right is um, no sugar, right. no oils. No salt. Right. So th those they get right. All good stuff. Also adding uh, green leafy vegetables. They get that right. Yep. So that's that's great. Yay them. Uh -huh. Where they stray is where they start talking about having a lot of meat. So let's talk about kind of let's talk about that first. Um, the the studies that are actually talking about the diets that were in the Paleolithic era, first of all, do point out that meat was very, very lean. They were eating wild animals, wild fish, wild fruits and vegetables. Right. So they're, the meat they had available, and even the fruits and vegetables they had available, very different from what right. we have right. available today. The percentage of fat. The percentage of fat in the Paleolithic diet from um, animal products was between 6 and 16%. Right. Compared to today. Today, even grass-fed animals, their fat is for between 40 and 60%. Right. So obviously that's a really vast difference. Yes. Um, also, you have to consider the environmental contaminants. We don't. Right. They didn't have environmental contaminants yeah. in the, in the was, Stone Age. There was Wasn't no Roundup. A thing. They weren't using Roundup back no. then. How did they get their crops out of the ground? I know. <laughs> but even so, even today, even if you're doing your own hunting and you're you know you're getting elk or venison or whatever you're eating, it's still going to have the environmental contaminants. It probably is still a little bit higher in fat. So there's definitely some um, you know issues there. Also, they were the wild fish they were eating very different. Even if you're eating wild caught fish now, very different right. from what we have available. The other thing that I thought was really interesting is that the plants that they ate in the Paleolithic era were so much higher in fiber. What did it say? Like four times yeah, higher. Yeah, four in times fiber? higher than plants today. Because the plants we eat today have been made more palatable, which mm -hmm. means they taste better. They're easier to eat. They're easier to digest. Well, because they're easier to digest, that means less, less fiber. fiber. Right. So, in the paleo diet now, people are getting substantially less fiber than people get on the plant-based diet now. Good morning, morning David. David. Good to see you. And all of us 
are getting substantially less fiber right. than they did in the paleo. Even whole food, plant based. Uh, you know, We're diets, even, yeah, we still can. Yeah. The other thing to consider is that in the paleo era, humans lived to be about 25 years old. Right. So if you're going to live to be 25, I guess you can eat pretty much whatever you want. Right. But if you plan on living longer than that, you may have to consider that that low carb isn't really the best option. Right. And the interesting thing that you just that you mentioned, and I just want to harp on because I can't. Okay. <laughs> is that um, the food eaten in the paleo um, paleolithic paleolithic era? Dang, I think that era was threw me off. <laughs> anyway, uh, that food was was drastically different than the food we're eating today. Um, you know, the pollutants aren't in there. The meat's leaner, um, the plants had more fiber. So even for whole food plant-based people, um, which didn't they say that that uh, whole food plant-based lifestyle is actually closer to a paleolithic or the paleo diet than the paleo diet is? So the article that I found has a chart where it compares the actual paleolithic diet as determined by studying paleolithic poop. <laughs> That's how they figured it out. Good stuff. Uh, yeah. So they studied that, came up with this diet, and then they put next to it the paleo diet as it's you know currently recommended right. and then they put next to that the whole food plant-based diet and they color coded it and if you look at it nothing is exactly what the paleolithic diet was which is impossible which is impossible we don't right. have the options but the whole food plant-based way of eating is actually closer mm -hmm. to the paleolithic diet as far as micro and macronutrients go than the paleo diet right. is the other thing that I want to point out, and this is something we've talked about before, is that the paleo diet ignores the vast amount of science that, that shows that animal products are not great for us. Right. They don't do us any favors as far as you know, high, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, heart disease, diabetes, obesity, and even a lot of cancers grow better with animal products. Right. So... <sighs> People, so the argument you get when I say when I tell people the science, they're like, "Well, but I lose weight on it." True. Okay, you can lose weight on chemo. Yes. You can also lose weight by taking heroin. Right. You can lose weight by taking diet pills from the seventies. Right. I recommend against all of those things. Exactly. Because you know what? They're bad for you. Yep. So, yes, being on the paleo diet will cause you to lose weight, and the reason that it causes you to lose weight is because it makes you take in less calories right. because they are restricting processed food which is a source of huge amounts, amounts of, of calories, calories. Yeah. and you know, a lot of their dairy they restrict dairy which I think that's great and the oil salt sugar so they're restricting calories and anything you do that restricts calories at least for the short term is going to cause you to lose weight right. but it's also why people want to yo-yo dieting because for the short term you'll, you'll achieve your short-term goal if your long-term goal is to lose the weight and keep it off, you can't. That's you not cannot trick your body into being on low calories for a long term. And the reason is your body says, "Oh, that's all the calories available. I'll learn to live on that." Right. So it stores and fat it, anyhow. It, and it changes your metabolism, which is mm -hmm. all bad. So that that's definitely a, a challenge when it comes to any diet that you go on that restricts calories. Which is why I talk about on whole food plant based, you don't restrict calories. You eat as much as you want, and it doesn't matter because which is why we're picking on which is why we're eating almonds, and and you can because there, it's so much volume that you can't take in enough calories mm -hmm. to be um, overweight. And I'm in a lot of forums where people say I went vegan and I gained weight. It's because they're eating junk food, junk food mm -hmm. vegan, and and that is not the same as whole food plant based. So, the point being. Being paleo will cause you to lose weight uh, in the short term. It is very hard on you in the long term because it does raise your cholesterol. There are some studies that say in the very short term, it lowers cholesterol, and that's because of the weight loss. Anything that causes weight loss also lowers your cholesterol. Right. But the human studies for paleo are only about three months. Right. They don't Not have long time. human studies. Yeah. The studies that they reference are longer than that, are on pigs. Right. So um, that's not That's not the same thing? thing. No, hmm. it's not. Um, it gives you data, but it's not data on humans. You obviously never saw green acres. No. Because they had a pig that almost was human. Okay. No? Not the same Why thing? Why is he such a strange human? <laughs> um, so if you want to lose weight, keep it off and be healthy, 
Eat plants. Eat plants. And that's not to say, you know, I'm, I'm not telling you have to be 100% plant-based like we are. No. Nope. You, there is, it's perfectly fine to have some animal, lean animal product in, in your diet, if you absolutely must. What, what did that article say about the uh, Paleolithic um, era as far as the meat? I mean, it still was only like 6 to 12% of their diet. It or, was a small percent yeah. calorie wise. So even, even then, even that era, they were, you, they were eating small portions of meat. They weren't eating... Just like, like I always tell you, if you can catch an antelope with a stick, you should eat it. Just got one the other day. <laughs> if fantastic. you're not spending the calories to catch an antelope with a stick, Maybe not. Exactly. So that's what I wanted to share with you about low carb diets. They're not as safe as you think they are. High carb diets are definitely the way to go. Um, our diet is probably 80, 85% carbs. Yeah. Healthy okay. carbs. Um, and beans and rice and all the yummy all stuff. All the other good stuff, yes. And it's, it's, just, it's just healthy. And humans have been living on it for a long, long time. Mm -hmm. So I highly recommend it. If... Uh... If you'd like to see our, our list of staples, uh, go to our website and contact us. Reach out. There's a place yeah, to email ask. us. Email us, and we'll send you a PDF of our staples. It shows you what we generally keep in the house. And um, what we eat. And what we eat, yeah. And if you want to see what we eat every day, join the website, and you can look at our journals, where yeah, we literally we, we, every day keep a food journal. We, we put down everything we eat. So that, the day. so that you can see how we and what right. we're eating. Exactly. So if you're getting value from these, please like and share. I did get to see some hearts and some thumbs up come across the, the screen today, and that's always that's fun. Awesome. We appreciate yeah. that. Because um, we're our goal is to help people and to make a difference um, on the planet. So that's what we're trying to do by sharing the knowledge. And trust me, there's a lot of knowledge over here. Yes, more than you can imagine. <laughs> so yeah. we look forward to being able to share more of it. If you have a topic you'd like us to cover, let us know. And we'll um, make sure we brush up our research on whatever topic it is that you're interested in hearing about. Exactly. Did you have anything you wanted to add? I saw oh, I wanted to add one thing. Sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You go first. No, you go. Go ahead. Um, our newsletter goes out on Wednesday, so if you want to get our newsletter, please let us know. Either sign up on the website or send me your email in a private message here on Facebook. Right. Okay, now you And the only silly little tip that I want to add is, so we're eating almonds this morning, and um, what we were listening to last night, which was um, the China study, the China study, uh, they mentioned was it that where they were talking about nuts, or did I see it somewhere? Else? No, you saw it somewhere else. I saw it somewhere else. Anyway, they talked about how almonds are virtually have no or very low saturated fat. Cashews, which are basically the two main nuts that we like to chew on, are high in saturated fat. Which is why they double as cheese when you bake. Exactly. The the. Um, Interesting thing is, even the saturated fat from the cashews do not react in your body the same way saturated fat from animal products do. Oh, well, that's interesting. Yeah, that's interesting. So your body can still take the, the saturated fat from the cashew and utilize it better and then process it process more effectively. It better. Yeah. So just an interesting little tidbit. Yeah. This morning it's, it's, it's um, almonds. Tomorrow maybe cashews. You never know. <laughs> Stay tuned. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And the calories from carbs get burned off as body heat. The calories from protein and fat get stored as fat. Right. Exactly. So I think that's it for today. All right. We're going to eat breakfast. Okay. Good mind. Oatmeal. 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 Absolutely. And so, with no, that, oh, wait, wait, we got to come Let's see what to say. Oh, yeah. Organics. Definitely. Yes. We yeah. always eat our almonds organic. Yes, absolutely. All right. Go ahead. That's it? Okay. So with that, we will say, eat real food, not too much. Mostly plants. Have a great day, guys. We'll see you tomorrow. Get out and enjoy the sunshine. It's going to be nice, especially if you're in the uh, northeast area. Bye. I'm sure California is nice, too, but <laughs> it doesn't count.